So how important is this place to us? Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam May peace be upon you, upon you be peace He is everything And he does not forget Justice will come to the Holy Land Palestine, Palestine Palestine, you will be free Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum Peace and love my brothers and sisters Whoever you are, wherever you are You are my family Smile, you know why Because it'll make you feel better Your brother Omar Isa And I'm in the blessed land of Al-Quds Subhanallah Right, we're in Palestine Masjid Al-Aqsa and we are doing an epic vlog. Molana MTR is right there. Give him a wave, give him a wave, Molana. He's gonna be our buddy today. So listen, family, let me tell you what happened, yeah? Obviously, everything is thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I lost my luggage coming here, subhanAllah. So I've got nothing, right? These are the clothes I wore. I have to do some shopping. So you're gonna come with me, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do a lot of amazing stuff. Keep it locked until the end, because it's gonna be a mad journey, because it's been a very stressful one. But I will tell you how the journey went as the vlog comes along. We've got the money changed, alhamdulillah. They call this the shekel. because I have to change the pounds. Mulana changed bare money, so you're gonna, he's gonna be doing my shopping for me. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. So let's go and buy a suitcase now. Because I ain't got nothing. So this is the Attarin market in the old city of Jerusalem, where like famous spices, subhanAllah, um, even Attar, like, you know, it's very, very famous. And across here, there's another market, which is like a meat market, where it's all meat, right, subhanAllah. And then on the other side, there's another market. And then up where we were before, that's basically the Al Bazaar. Like Jerusalem is like, it's like the city of the prophets. It's very, very important, subhanAllah, in our religion of Islam, in every religion you know, across, across the board. So it gives you that feeling. And how long have you been uh, functioning this for? This is sixth generation, me and my brother. Yeah. Sixth generation? Yeah. It's half my up. Sixth, sixth, sixth the sixth generation. Wow, my same business. Well, Allahu Akbar. Yes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put more barakah in your business. Amin, amin, amin. Amazing. So, the sea of herbs.com. So, family, if you want to get something from here and support our brothers, subhanAllah, check them out. www.seaofherbs.com. They ship to the UK, America, all over the world. So there's one thing, yeah, which is very, very important in our religion of Islam. Being generous and giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's actually a sunnah to gift brothers and sisters. So this, I give to my brother. I got it for you. Can you buy me a thobe? He's going to buy me a thobe. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, we got, we got a white one. That's what we want. I found a white thobe. So the beautiful brother in there gave me a gift. Alhamdulillah. This I will gift to my mother. Allahu Akbar. And Mulana's over there going to the jewelry shop to buy for his wife. Which one are you buying for? Your first or your second wife? You know when you go through hard times, you have to always say Alhamdulillah. Honestly, my suitcase was packed to the max, everything. I had everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you're not going to have it. You're not having it, it's going to get lost. Am I looking a bit down? Yes. Am I saying Alhamdulillah? Yes. Is this life? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Why? TV with you. Why? Who are you? Oh, I'm uh, Munshid. Munshid? Yes. Where? In England. In England? Yes, yes. And do you know where you are now? Yes, of course. Where you are? In Palestine. In Palestine? Yes. You will come? Jazakallah Hayron. You can say that I am the representative of the people here oh, in the Lord. old city. May Allah bless you. I mean. That means you will come to Jerusalem the capital of Palestine. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Ahlan wa sahlan. Alhamdulillah. Ahlan wa sahlan. Hayakum Allah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. Beautiful brother. Masha'a tabarakallah. What a warm welcome. But this is the thing, right? The Palestinian people are beautiful. Because you fully don't understand it when you watch it on TV. Because we think we know. When we say free Palestine, we think we know. We don't know. When you come, you have to come. Visit Masjid al-Aqsa. And do not abandon our brothers and sisters. We'll keep coming back inshallah. And you have to come here as well. That's why. Come to the tours, Zavel does tours. Come, support the brothers and sisters in Palestine. Bismillah ar rahim fam. We're back at it. But this time, I got my jubba on. I'm out with the crew. You know my man. 
the brother who, very pious, mashallah, mashallah, tabarakallah. This is my beautiful older brother. Assalamu alaikum. It's uh, clearly um, beauty before age here. So um, uh, <laughs> today we're going to be vlogging. Go it can't say nothing. Yeah, today, what's funny is actually called a vlog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you change it? No, it's because the blog is when you write. Anyway, so we're going to, today we're going, we're going, we're going, uh, Be Bethlehem, we're going Hebron, and we're going Jericho. That's some um, um, Atikur, the guy who's always late. Um, he's, a, he's a member of the charity organisation GRT. Just so you know, we wanted to get Ehsan Tuff Media. Who? Listen, they've got the best machine that is in the world here, alhamdulillah. Well, we don't brag. We don't. I'm only joking, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> we take a photo, we put them on the edge. So when, we, when I put it on Instagram, I crop him out. I do it all the time. You know all our photos? He's always in the corner. Put it to the side, I think. What are you touching up? Being here just a couple of days, really, truly, I never understood what free Palestine meant. I never understood. May Allah forgive me. I feel ashamed, man. And, and, and I feel that the Ummah, we collectively should feel ashamed together all of us because we have to we have to act if we don't act it's only going to get worse it's only going to get worse may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our Palestinian brothers and sisters I mean and since I was born my dad was saying it from a young age I remember you know Palestine free inshallah will be free this is from us imagine how long they've been going through it we don't understand man we're blessed to live in England and have everything and not walk around and be looked at in a certain way and no may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us man and we'll say it all the time, us Muslims will speak up, because we have to. If you don't speak up, then we're gonna, one day we're going to be dead. One day we're going to be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master. And he will say, what did you do? I gave you the ability. I, my ability is my voice, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me to do this, right? So I'm using it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we've come, and we're showing that love. But we've got to keep doing it. It's not come once, we've got to keep doing it. I've got to bring my kids here. I've got to bring my wife here, inshallah. My father's not here now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jantar Firdaus. Ameen. SubhanAllah, my brothers and sisters. This is the place that when Umar radiallahu anh came, for the first time when they conquered Jerusalem, this is where he came. And he, out of elation, because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whatever you do, we have to get this place for the Muslims. And when he came here out of elation, he said, Tafir, Allahu Akbar. You know, that he prays Allah, oh Allah, you are the greatest. It's emotional because the story is deep, okay? Uh, the story goes, subhanAllah, and very briefly, because it's a really long story, is that when uh, Umar radiallahu anh was coming, they wanted him, you know, the people who had the keys to Jerusalem, they were like, we want the Amir to come and we'll give it to him. The patron said that, right? And there was also like big priests and all that kind of stuff. And when he came, the, 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 uh, the person, the head of their community, the, the patron, the priest, he came being held by four servants in a carriage. And when he came out, he was like, where's, where's the Amir? There's two people walking and he's like, so where's the Amir? Where's the leader of the Muslims? This empire by this time, Allahu Akbar, right? And he goes, where? And then um, he went to, he got out of his uh, carriage thing because they were lifting him up. And he came out and he had gold, like, you know, like crown and dripped up proper. And he came and he went. And then as he went, he, he came up to me and, went, say, and he looked up on the person who was sitting on the horse or whatever it was. He was there and he goes, he looked at him and went, oh. And then uh, he went, Yo, Amir, you're the Amir, you're the leader of the Muslims. And then he goes, I'm not, the man there. And he looked and Umar an had clothes and he had patches on his clothes because he used to sew his clothes because he didn't used to believe in uh, uh, extravagance, you know? Like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, they didn't care about wealth. Their wealth was Islam. And, uh, and then also Umar an on this journey fell over. So he was even more muddy. And he was, he, was, he was baffled by this, that this is the biggest empire in the world. This is the leader. And look how he's so humble. This is why we have to study the real heroes of our religion. Forget this falsehood of celebrities, man. No Muslim celebrity is gonna help you with nothing. These are our heroes, the Sahaba, the prophets, the pious predecessors. This is our religion. Look, it's breathtaking. Allahu Akbar. Imagine Umar an coming and seeing that and saying Allahu Akbar, because Allah is the greatest. Come to Palestine. 
come to Palestine, come to Palestine. Come over here, you know, make that intention. If you think about safety, I will not bring my family. I've got my family over here, subhanAllah. I will not bring them if it was a safety issue. It's amazing. Don't look at the narratives on the media, subhanAllah. Get over here, enjoy. Zakallah, assalamu alaikum. As you can see, the tour is blessed. You, we're going to each point, uh, the Molana Kothar, you know, talks and gives you an insight of the history, the important history. This is the, this is the, the city of the prophets. And it's something I'll keep saying. Please, Muslims, come. Trust me, there's a point in this vlog where I'm going to talk about how hard it was to get here. I've never, ever been so hard for me in my life. I've traveled the world, alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my master, my majesty. Please, brothers and sisters, when you listen to that story, I want that to, you know, uh, inspire you, the janoon, the fire to come here. Is it even a shield artist? Is he a queen? Oh, Marisa. Come on. Come on. We send it to a That's my brother, bro. Who's your favorite Nashida? Oh, Marisa. Salam alaikum. Oh, is that a picture? Oh, sorry. Come on, they're not here. Tell us video. No, right. I don't. Um, I took a selfie. You know the thing is, this is the thing, brothers. This guy, yeah. This you know, you, you know, you know. They say keep. You know, they say sometimes, right? Keep your keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Yes, yes. He's not an enemy. Look, hold on, hold on, hold on. He, this is, he's joined the party. Come here, bro. Yeah. Come here, come here, come here. You, you know, know what they you say? Mean. You know what they say? Your blood is thicker than whatever? Not the case. Yeah. Just so you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> like I'm going to change My favorite machine yeah. artist is a temple. I'm just going to edit it out. Uh, but he's, he's all right. He's, he's okay. I've talked no, to him. No, stop it, stop it. It's going to edit <laughs> out just like that. <laughs> <laughs> My brothers and sisters, these are all the settlements that um, the the Israeli government supports, uh, you know, people from all around the world to come. And they, they actually say to them, come and settle here, because they want to, you know, they want to take as much land as they can. And these are very disputed areas, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our Palestinian brothers and sisters, ameen. So as you can see, look far, you can see them, subhanAllah. All settlements, and they're all over. Palestine is not a very big country, but brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. You know, and there's like, it's separated. There was a wall that we really should show you. We'll show you on the way back if we can. There's a separation wall. My brothers and sisters, we are in Halhul. It's a, it's a town uh, next to Hebron in Palestine here. And what you can see here, subhanAllah, is Maqam Yunus. Okay? This is an absolutely amazing thing because Yunus alayhi salam rested here for a year. And we know the very famous prophet, Yunus alayhi salam, subhanAllah. And what du'a, and I know you guys are watching me and you're thinking, we know the du'a, but let me tell you the du'a that he made in the belly of the whale. La ilaha illa anta, subhanaka inni kuntum min al-dhalimeen. He constantly kept saying this, because when he was on the boat and he left his people he was trying to, you know, uh, give the message to about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he got frustrated, you know, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiven, he was a prophet. So when he went on the boat, they were doing lots, you know, like the boat's getting too heavy. We need to chuck some people off the boat. So they were doing lots, you know, picking straws and seeing who comes. Whoever had the shortest straw, they're going to get thrown off. So they kept doing it. And Yunus alayhi salam, sh straw kept being the shortest. And they said, we can't throw you. You're a person of Allah. But it kept happening. And he said, this is from Allah. And they threw him off. And then he got swallowed by the whale. And then he made that du'a. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min ad There's no deity but you. Exalted are you. Indeed, I am from among the wrongdoers, subhanAllah. So this is a, a place where Yunus alayhi salam rested for one year. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. The history of this country, Palestine. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our beautiful brothers and sisters. Ameen. So brothers and sisters, we are in Maqam Yunus. The masjid where basically this is the area where Yunus alayhi salam came and rested. You're obviously seeing a grave behind me. But there's no guarantee that Yunus al Islam is buried there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. There's only two guarantees, right, of where our prophets are buried. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in Medina and then Ibrahim al Islam in Hebron. But even then, it's in that area. Yeah, so we don't know if this is it or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But, you know, it's a very important aspect because Yunus al Islam, as I said, was one of the major prophets of our deen. All the prophets are important, but we have prophets who come with messages. And you know, and Yunus alayhi salam came to give the message to the Iraqi you know, people because he was uh, of Iraqi descent. And subhanAllah, and, and as I said, the story of the whale when he left because they were not listening to his message. 
and he, he came, became frustrated. And you know, uh, like for example, the story of um, Nuh alayhi salam, he gave uh, da'wah to his people for some say uh, 800 years, over 800 years, Allahu alam. And then obviously we know that the story of the boat and the flooding happened. In Islam, we do not believe that the world was flooded, by the way. It's, we believe that an area, even now when you notice it, areas get, you know, flooded and, you know, destruction happens. Like recently in Pakistan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our brothers and sisters who went through that hardship. Ameen. So we are in the city of Hebron, where Ibrahim alayhi salam is buried. There's no exact point, according to the scholars, but it's here, subhanAllah. And it's um, controlled by um, Palestinians, but the quarter which has got the maqam of Ibrahim alayhi salam masjid is where the security is. Uh, the Israelis. So subhanAllah, as you can see, there's the, you know, our uh, Philistine brothers and sisters are all around here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free our Philistine brothers and sisters. Ameen. Say Ameen. Okay? Because this is mad. It's crazy. You know? And I was told that what they try to do is they try to buy stuff around, try to expand their territory uh, around the, 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 the masjid of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Yeah? So we have to understand the tactics. But we know. Allah plans, they plan, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. So alhamdulillah guys, this is my beautiful bro. Please tell them bro about Zavel and why it's important to come to Palestine. You've just done it. No, but I need you to tell them because you're... This is one you know, of the most beautiful places you can come to and understand their plight properly. It's not about just reading about it. Come here and understand the beautiful people of Palestine. Understand about Jerusalem, understand about Masha Aqsa, the importance and so on. If this man who's a busy, busy man has taken the time out himself, he said, can I come with you guys, alhamdulillah, to show people about the beauty of Palestine and Pakistan. So please, come join us, come any which way you want, but come to Masjid Aqsa. It's their main prophet. <laughs> So Alhamdulillah, our cameraman got through, Allahu Akbar. So we are in Haram Ibrahimi, uh, Ibrahim Masjid, right? SubhanAllah, this is, uh, this is basically in Hebron, yeah? And SubhanAllah, in there is the maqam of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Okay, so it's very historical, SubhanAllah. And you'll notice the tension, you'll notice that kind of, you'll feel it, SubhanAllah. But may Allah SubhanAllah make it easy, Ameen, okay? So, when we get in there, inshallah, now we've got the camera in, we'll show you inside as well, inshallah, there's a masjid, we're going to pray salah, we're going to pray our dhuhr, and then, uh, you know, I, it's emotional for me. You know why? Because I've named my child after Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, subhanallah, and it's emotional, you know, subhanallah. Uh, Khalilullah is what Ibrahim alayhi salam was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's amazing. The, again, you hear me say this all the time, right? Come, come, come. Show the love to our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Come, 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 please. And you've got to keep watching till the end because I'm going to tell you what happened to me getting here. SubhanAllah, it's, it really shook me up, you know. So this is the resting place of our great prophet, Ibrahim alayhi salam, SubhanAllah. It's amazing to be in, it's because it's for me, I've got to say it again, I, I named my child Ibrahim. And you know, SubhanAllah, and names are very important. And there's nobody who, Khalilullah, friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the progeny of the prof, you know, the, the families. This is fun, it's amazing. And it's, there's a cave down there, right? And they're like buried down there. It's not here, it's like a cave. And there's also, as I was saying before, that other prophets are buried there as well. Yusuf alayhi salam, um, Yaqub alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, you know, and the wife, wife of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So it's a very subhanAllah emotional thing. If you can see, if you can put the camera through a bit for the jihad, that is the Jewish, Jewish side, right there. You can see it's right through there, subhanAllah. But my brothers and sisters, as we were talking earlier, we are in the kind of, the, the presence of uh, the Prophet, subhanAllah. Obviously, the guarantee is that Ibrahim alayhi salam is buried down here, right, subhanAllah. Uh, that's what scholars say, that's the guarantee that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam guaranteed to be buried in Medina, al Madawara. But there's also consensus, and it's very strong consensus, that Prophets are buried here. This is underneath again. There's a cave underneath here, right? So don't think this is the grave. It's a cave underneath. This is um, Ishaq alayhi salam, subhanAllah. Okay, and this is um, uh, Rifat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, subhanAllah. Uh, and it's like, it gives you kind of a very spiritual kind of feeling to be here. Okay, so 1996, 1998, I'll put it here, it'll be written here. Right, a man from the Jewish faith 
came in to this masjid and killed like over 28 Muslims because this all used to be a masjid, okay? And what happened after that was they basically closed the masjid for six months. And then they started saying, well, we want control of it as well because, uh, you know, Abraham is our father, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and they caused the issue. So now, subhanAllah, certain times of the year, they get access to this masjid as well. They've completely closed it off. That side though, if, you want to, if I turn you around, that side, my brothers and sisters, is where Yaqub alayhi salam is buried on that side. As I said, there's a very strong consensus that he is buried there. And Yaqub alayhi salam is the father of Yusuf alayhi salam. They made that into a synagogue. And that door right there, if you can see, this one here, this door, is the one where the Mu'addin has to wait here for them to open the door and they will decide whenever they want to open it, subhanAllah. May Allah make it easy on our brothers and sisters here. Ameen. And Yaqub alayhi salam's maqam is over there. SubhanAllah. You know, it's, it's deep, man. It's deep. Like, the, as I said, uh, Palestine is, 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 SubhanAllah, it's one of the most important places on earth. Please come. And also, let me say something. We're not here to speak about anyone's faith. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Surah Al-Kafirun, your faith, your my faith, my faith is mine. We're not here to hate anybody. We're not, we're not, that is not Islam. SubhanAllah, that is not the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Muslims are being tested, I was listening to a brother speak at Maqameh, uh, Yunus alayhi salam, and he made me cry. Wallahi, he said that, how important is Masjid al-Aqsa? How important is it that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led the Prophet in Salah there? The prophets were not led in Makkah and Medina, they were led in Masjid al Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it right now. If you think now, right, we, all, we love Makkah. We love Medina. Yeah? But where did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lead the prophets? In Jerusalem. In Masjid al-Aqsa. How powerful is that? Doesn't that, I didn't, you know, when you really deep it and you think about it, we need to keep coming, my brothers and sisters. Do not give up on this place, please. Because the love that they show, they feel so happy. How do you feel like, you know, subhanAllah, you come here and you said something to me earlier, you said, I feel special, right? Yeah. How do you feel, man? Uh, I feel emotional. Uh, I feel like, I think, for us not to come here, I mm. think it's injustice to the Palestinian people yeah, and yeah. to our religion. Yeah, exactly. Because this is a part of us that we need to, you know, make sure it exists because they don't want us to come here mm. they put like you said earlier the barriers they put is unbelievable yeah you don't realize the anger you feel but you can't feel angry you just have to do what they don't want you to do is come here show them how important this is to us yeah show them like you can put us through everything you want but we will keep coming back we will keep coming back the prophet sacrificed their whole lives for us like subhanAllah, like there's a story, you know Yusuf al Islam, right? They said that he was the most beautiful man ever after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said he was so beautiful, right? That women, when they used to see him, they used to, out of all of his beauty, they used to cut themselves. And they said he was so beautiful, he had to wear a niqab. Yusuf alayhi salam. And Yusuf alayhi salam is the son of Yaqub alayhi salam. You know the one that we can't see? Yes, we can't even go there. We can't even go there. Shocking. So imagine how important the story of Yusuf alayhi salam is in our religion. It's so yeah. important because yeah. he was accused by a woman that he did something with her and he didn't and then he was put in prison but then what happened was when he was when he came out subhanallah he became one of the he was the subhanallah he became like um, um, a leader in, in a certain sector in, in Egypt subhanallah and his brothers who threw him in the well you know because they didn't like him because yeah. Yaqub alayhi salam loved uh, Yusuf alayhi salam subhanallah yeah, yeah. it's a very beautiful story in the Quran yeah, you know and this is so close to us uh, to our heart and we're in, we are actually in in history, we are walking the footsteps of the prophets. That's powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves my brother. I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you a beautiful story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves my brother. May Allah bless him. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted my brother to come to Masjid al Aqsa in November and inshallah in January he's going to Mecca and Medina for the first time. Allahu Akbar. Like that is like people yearn to go and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed my brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa give him the highest iman. I mean, you know, he's my oldest brother as well, mashallah. So subhanAllah, it's, it's beautiful. Make dua also for our family. You know, subhanAllah, we've gone through certain hardship in our family. Please make dua for our family. May Allah subhanAllah give our family the best of health. So my brothers and sisters, yeah, we are in the heart 
of Hebron, okay? It's also called Khalil Rahman, obviously, because it is where Ibrahim alayhi salam is buried, subhanAllah, and the other prophets. As I said, Yusuf alayhi salam, um, Ishaq alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, uh, the, the uh, Sarah alayhi salam, the Prophet Ibrahim uh, alayhi salam's wife. So this is, subhanAllah, the heart of Palestine. This is where the economy runs Palestine. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase it. Ameen. Say Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase it to become stronger. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free this land. Ameen. We keep saying it, we'll always say it. Come, come, come. We just had food at this place. I can't read it. So yeah, alhamdulillah, it's, uh, it's, this is it. If you can do a 360. Allahu Akbar. This is the, the hub, the heart of where the economy runs all of Palestine. Allahu Akbar. May Allah increase it. Ameen. Okay, so we are here in Bethlehem and this is a, the separation wall that subhanAllah, which the Israeli government did, Ariel Sharon kind of like dreamed this idea after the Intifada, for example, to prevent bombs happening. SubhanAllah, even if you look up at the tower, there's a sniper sitting there, right? You won't see him, he's in the balaclava, just in case anything happens. So SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our brothers and sisters walking about doing their business because who knows what they think, what's happening, right? So there's quite a, a wall. You could see like painting on it, like art's been done on it. There's actually, I'll make Donald Trump there, which is really random, um, SubhanAllah. And then other kind of drawings as well. I don't fully understand, I don't know what these drawings are. Somebody who knows, please let us know in the comments below. But this is a separation wall that they have between, um, you know, from the kind of, the, uh, you know, They've got these walls everywhere in Palestine, by the way, to separate that kind of line of where the, you know, the settlers are, or Israelis are, and then the Palestinians, subhanAllah. As I said before, it's like the thing of, oh, we're preventing any attacks happening. You know, Allahu Alam, subhanAllah. And it goes all the way around. And over this, oh, behind here, by the way, is like a, a military kind of um, a, a, a stop where the military are, subhanAllah. And some were saying that I actually have doors where they would come out. And we're like, you know, subhanAllah. So it's, 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 it's crazy, man, it's crazy. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Ameen. Bethlehem is very, very, very important to the Christian faith. There's a church here, the Nativity Church. We, as, as kids in school, right, we remember we used to do the play in it with Mary and the, the three holy men and the baby and the lamb and the wise men, you know? So yeah, the church is here. Christmas, Easter, they close the roads because there's so many people come here, understandably. Right, and there's also a very another important church that they have in um, Jerusalem. So, subhanAllah, majority of the people in Bethlehem are Christians, right? Christian Arabs. So, my brothers and sisters, the moment that I asked you throughout the vlog to wait until. So I'm going to tell you how difficult it was to get here. And then I'm going to tell you something really strange for you to hear. But I'm going to explain why I said it. So basically, my brothers and sisters, right now is Monday. And we were supposed to get here on Thursday. But what happened, subhanAllah, on Thursday when we got our plane from Luton is that one hour into the flight, the pilot came on and he said, guys, sorry, but there's a technical issue. So we have to dump some fuel. So they dumped like three tons of fuel. So they were going around the airport, going around the airport. And then when they started landing, my brother and sister, when I tell you this plane shaked, like I've never ever felt a plane shake ever. Yeah, and I've traveled, alhamdulillah, a lot. And this was all over the place, subhanAllah. And when we landed, I noticed something and many people in the plane noticed something. And by the way, when he said this about the technical issue, lots of people started crying in the plane hysterically. I was just sitting there, there's something that, um, uh, you know, I've got, I've got a habit and it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All errors that we make are from us. There's a, there's a good habit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to do is, when I'm in the plane, I tend to always recite Ayatul Kursi. And Ayatul Kursi is, is one of the most important ayat of the Qur'an. And you know, subhanAllah, I'm just sitting there, I was calm, you know, I was thinking, you know, it was weird actually, because when I was in the moment, it was surreal. But people were crying and as we're landing, when we landed, we noticed, lots of people noticed, as I was saying, was there was fire trucks and ambulances waiting. So we're like, what really happened? What really happened, right? So when we got out, we heard several things from people. Um, there was a bang. My older brother came on the trip as well, as you've seen in the vlog. And he goes, 
before the captain made the announcement, the pilot, he came out of his, um, the cockpit and he saw that his face was like white, like, a, like he'd seen a ghost. And he was, he was really like, really looked scared. And he put his head on the wall, it's not normal. Went back and we rearranged the flight the next morning, subhanAllah. But we were gonna miss now Juma in Masjid Al-Aqsa, but you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we plan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our intention to want to pray Juma here, subhanAllah. So the next day we got the plane and before we set off, the same pilot was flying the plane and um, he came on the speaker again and he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. I didn't tell you this yesterday because I didn't want you to panic, but one of the engines blew out. SubhanAllah. Whose dua saved us? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And it really made you think, you know, that this life is so temporary. So then we got here, we got to Tel Aviv, and then uh, we were stopped by security for four hours. No reason at all. No reason at nothing. They gave no reason. They spoke to a couple of brothers, khalas. And credit to Zavel, brother Numair, who was there with us. He got through, subhanAllah, but he stayed with us. And uh, that was beautiful, that was very kind, you know, of him to do that. I know he's a tour guide and all that, but still, you know, he still sat there, you know, with us and, you know, guided us through and told us that this is normal. And I was like, why is it normal? He goes, because they want to make it hard. So you don't want to come back. You have all these issues. So then I had my own personal thing that happened. After four hours, got our passport, went through, I couldn't find my luggage. And I went to Lost and Found and again, Brother Numair, you know, very kindly came with me and he said, Umar, let me tell you something, my brother. We always advise people to bring carry-on luggage because if luggage gets lost here, you won't see it for another 40 days. And that broke my heart because, yeah, I'm, listen, I'm very particular with my luggage. I'm, I pack things specifically. I'm pretty much an OCD, I'm not gonna lie, yeah? I've got obsessive compulsive disorder, right? Everything is packed in a certain way. So I thought, Allah, whatever you do, Allah, I accept. We're humans though, you know, sometimes we feel something. And I went there and I had nothing. I was like, what am I going to do? I like my thobes, as you know, right? And I thought I'll buy some. I had five in the suitcase. So we went, we went to each shop. We got, I had to get my, my toiletries. I had to get this stuff and that stuff and my jubba. And I had, I had nothing. I had nothing. SubhanAllah. I had to get my undergarments, everything. Allahu Akbar though. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Something beautiful happened though. When I put my um, thobe on, and I came and I came to Masjid Al-Aqsa and it gave me something in my heart that I've only felt when I go to Mecca and Medina. Wallahi. And you know what else I saw? I saw the pain in my brothers and sisters' eyes. We scream free, free Palestine, but we don't understand what that means if we've never visited Masjid Al-Aqsa, if we've never come and supported them for that few days that we're here. But they have to live in this occupation because it is an occupation. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, ascended to the heavens from there. According to the consensus of the scholars, we pray five times a day, right? That came when he went up to the Arsh, he went to the heavens. We have to do more, man. We're failing, we're failing as an Ummah. They're all on their own. They're all on their own. And think about it. Sheikh who did the tour, Malana Qawthar, he said, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, led the prophets in Salah here. He didn't lead them in Mecca, he didn't lead them in Medina, he led them here. So how important is this place to us? We're laying ourselves down and we're letting them down. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cry, but Wallahi, it pains my heart. I always say to Allah, Allah, if you gave me power, if you gave me power, but Allah, you know best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us another Salahuddin. I mean, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us another Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us another Umar radiallahu anhu. Ameen. We will never ever give up these people, our brothers and sisters. We are one Ummah. Let's stop using that word without acting on it. Come here. They're going to make your life difficult to come here. Wallahi. I'm not going to lie. They're going to make it difficult. And guess what? I heard today that they make it even more difficult when you're leaving. Just to show you, just to say to you, we're going to keep doing it. You know what we're going to do? Inshallah, our brother said, he gave me some nasiha. He said, Umar, look at his eyes and say, Inshallah, see you soon. And I can see the guard, guard my camera, when he, they, they're going by, I see the guard just going past us now with their guns. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free this land. I mean, and we have to speak haq. Please, my brothers and sisters, come here. 
keep coming here. Tell people to come here. Come with Zavel. Come with whoever you want. Just come. Come for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This place is so important in our religion. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the small things we've given you. But you're, you're not going to feel it through this. You're not going to feel it through this. You need to come here and feel it. You need to come here and feel it. Just before I close off, I, I went, we went to Hebron yesterday where Ibrahim alayhi salam is buried and there was a small little child, man. He was beautiful and he was just standing and he just waved. He was waving at us. He didn't want anything. He was waving at us. And I've got children. They are our children. They are children, right? You know how strong we are as an ummah when we come together? We're falling for the material dunya. One day we're going to be dead. I'm going to be waiting in our cupboard and all our deeds are going to be in front of us. And one of the biggest deeds I've, I, know, I feel now is going to be us not speaking up and visiting and doing something. I'm not saying do anything wrong. We, we, you know, the media will portray us and say we do this, do that. No. Islam is a deen of haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the, the, uh, the surah of Surah Al-Kafirun to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Your deen is yours, my deen is mine. Live in harmony. The last time this land was in harmony was when Umar radiallahu an was in power. Subhanallah. Imagine. There were probably other times, but the longest period I was reading yesterday. Subhanallah. 400 years until the Crusaders came. And we know what happened there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free Palestine. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a leader, a just leader. Ameen. Man, you know me, man. I tried to give you the good vibes, innit? I tried to give you the happy vibes, but life is hard. But we're on this dunya for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. I know I am, man. I'm nobody. You know? <laughs> I'm gonna have to be happy before I close it off because I don't want to leave you guys on that. But it's just this, this, it just gives you, makes you feel like that, you know? Okay. <laughs> so, don't forget to say Subhanallah. Don't forget to say Alhamdulillah. Don't forget to say Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and love, my brothers and sisters. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you are my family. Smile. You might ask why. Because it will make you feel better. Peace. Justice will come to the Holy Land. Palestine, 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 you will be free. Yaira B, we call you.